What's up guys, I'm John and you're watching Johnny Fabs and today we are working on my Honda Civic. Today we are finally going to be rebuilding the motor. Um, I'm putting a new motor together. If you guys have been following along, it's been quite a long time uh, since we've worked on the Civic. Uh, and if you guys don't know, it's a Honda uh, 92 EG hatch and it has a B-series motor. And today we are going to be rebuilding our uh, rather building a new block um so i have some new parts here and we're going to be assembling this block today and then uh, eventually it's going to be going into my uh eg so without further ado we're going to jump into the uh parts and then we're going to jump into assembly so for the block itself it is a b18b block um, but the nice thing about this block, it has been CSS, which is cylinder support systems, and they go ahead and machine out around the sleeves. The OEM sleeves stay, and then they press in their block guard, essentially. I don't know if you guys can pick up on the differences uh, in material. And then this should support the sleeves when running high horsepower and you are uh, these open decks are prone to cracking the sleeves so this should help out a lot and then also they cut in the groove right here for the o-ring for the top fuel ring so that should help with our head gasket sealing surface so that's it for the block for the crank we have a stock gsr crank uh, out of a b18 c1 um, i went with this uh, the GSR stroke because of the rods that I'm going with are B18C. Um, these are Sains rods. Um, and here's a part number, I believe. And these are their tri beam rods. So we'll open those up and we'll show you guys those. So here's a look at the Sains rods. Um, they have their uh, logo etched in and the part number, I believe. And these also have the 625. Uh, rod bolts so that's an upgrade in itself um, and these are their tri-beam design so these should hold up to all the power we're going to be making um, they look like a nice quality rod um, really nice uh, finish on everything and so those should work out good and also for the bearings we have king racing bearings for the mains and the rod bearings um so those should work out good and then we also have the thrust bearing um so everything should work out and then when i bought this block did have a little uh, main girdle um kind of like the gsrs have so i will be running that with the arp um main studs under here um uh, i am just going to be running the factory torque specs with the ARP studs on the mains because it hasn't been line uh, honed, um, but it should be fine with that. And then lastly, for the pistons, we have some Weisco pistons, so I'm gonna go ahead and open these up and show you guys. So here's a look at the pistons. Um, so they have the coating on the side here, and then they also have like this gold tint, almost like an anodizing on the surface. Uh, so these should work out good. They're all forged. And I believe these are 9.9 uh, .9 or right at 10 to 1 compression with the GSR um, rods and crank. Um, so I'm not exactly sure, but that's the part number on there. It varies per motor and stroke and combo. And then it co comes with the uh, wrist pins as well. So we are going to start off by putting the main bearings in to the block. Um, here's the part number on that. Um, so these are the XP main bearings um, by King. So we're going to go ahead and throw those in the block right now. Alright, so I got the lower half of the main bearings in. Um, this side has the cutouts for the oil, um, as you guys can see. And then the other side is flat. Um, you do wanna make sure that the 
um, tangs right here are lined up and uh, but yep I'm going to throw a little bit of assembly lube on there um, actually I am going to um, check the main bearing clearance with the plastic gauge um, so I'm going to put some of that on after I drop the crank in and then tighten the main caps down first and then once that checks out if that checks out good um, then we can take and clean that off and then put assembly lube on and uh, this is what I will be using for assembly lube this is what the auto store had in stock so I got a little can of that Also, you want to make sure you put your thrust bearings in right here. Um, that's very important. It keeps the crank from moving back and forth. And they just go down and they sit down in there, right there, in there. And uh, so, yep, don't forget those or you'll have a bunch of play in the crank. So I just used the plastic gauge down in there. You can see. Um, and then you use this tool to measure it just kind of a uh, cheap way of measuring and then you can line it up with the size and this is between uh, That green and the white it's between there and you can see a focus between um, 0 0.038 and 0 0.051 so it should be good. I'm going to double check on the Honda website and see where it should be at, where it should fall between those two, um, which I think it's going to be good. So if that's good, I'm going to clean that off, get that plastic off of there, and then uh, lube up the rest of these and put the uh, main caps back on with the new bearings. So, yep, gonna look that up real quick and I will let you guys know what the specs are all right you guys so I just went ahead and checked with plastic gauge I put a little strip right here on the main caps tighten them down and then um, you go ahead and measure it with this tool and it's between like the point zero three eight and the point zero five one um, in size so if you convert that over to standard it's around point zero zero one five um, so that's within spec so I'm going to go ahead and clean this off and then uh, tighten the main caps down with the new cam bearings um, and I'm going to put assembly lube on all this and then torque down these studs now that we got the rings gapped, we're going to put the rods on the pistons. And these are the Sains performance rods. Um, here's a look at the box uh, with all the specs on it. And uh, these do have the, these are the tri-beam rods that are 300M material. Um, and then they also have the 625 rod bolts uh, right here. If you guys can see but these are the ARP 625 rod bolts and then uh, these are our Weisco pistons so I'm gonna go ahead and put the c-clips in and then we can put the uh, wrist pin into the rod and get the other c-clip in So I'm going to go ahead and install the piston rings um, and make sure that you keep the piston 
um, and then the rings for that bore. So I know I gapped these for cylinder one. This is my cylinder one piston and rod, and it's gonna go into cylinder one. And then they give you a uh, layout for where to put the ring end gaps and make sure they're not all lined up. So it tells you right there um, how you're supposed to line up the ring gap. So I'm just gonna follow that. Put our oil ring on first. And then our small oil rings, the gap up front. Our second oil ring gap on the other side. Just walk the ring around, make sure you're not overstretching it. And then we want to put our second ring with the numbers on it facing up. walk that ring around and then our top ring with the numbers facing up and the end gap being on the opposite side of the second ring so I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that for all four piston rings and then we can get these installed into the block next we need to install our rod bearings um, in and then uh, then once we do that we should be good to put it into the block the pistons and rods and to do that uh, I'm using this tool here from Weisco it's just a ring compressor sleeve these are really nice um, you don't have to tighten anything down you just slip this on the piston and then it will compress the rings and then you can just tap it into the bore so we'll be using that tool and that is for the 81.5 millimeter bore size um, so we'll be using that after i get these uh, rod bearings these are a king bearing here's the part number and uh, yeah we're gonna go ahead and put these in So then that tool just slips over just like that. And we're ready to put it in the block. So I just got all the pistons and rods into the motor and torqued down onto the crank. I did 60 foot pounds um, because that is what was recommended. Uh, don't go over 65 foot pounds. Uh, so I did 60. So that should be good. 
and uh, I think that's gonna be it for this video uh, getting the bottom end put together on the Civic motor um, just to wrap up this is a b18 block but we went with the GSR crank and the uh, Sains uh, rods the tri beam 300 mil with the 625 rod bolts and then the white skull pistons uh, 81 and a half millimeter bore size and the ring gaps were 18 and 21 for the lower ring so i think that's going to be it for this video on building the short block bottom end for my honda civic eg hatch stay tuned when we go ahead and put the head on and uh, start doing the turbo stuff but thanks for watching please hit that like button comment what you think uh what do you think it's going to make for power uh when we go turbo and just subscribe for more on the build and the rest of the build thanks for watching peace